hello and welcome welcome to the youtube channel if you're new here welcome back if you've been here before my name is wendy sige you can call me mama Dina. and yeah so i'm having a little bit of a situation here nikona homa so then i was thinking of doing this whole video with a mask but i was like Eita bamba. so actually my, my light just went off but it's okay um yeah so i just thought let me just go at it like this because i just won't be too close to the camera but um yeah i'm not so confident like this but it's better than this i was thinking this would be too much i don't know how you think like no way and honestly i don't want to I do not want to, um, what do you call it? I do not want to postpone this video or procrastinate anymore because I feel like now I have the energy to shoot. Let me just shoot it. Um, and I mean, it's part of human, you normal. This happens to me a lot when I get a cold. So today's video is going to be a few questions, just getting to know me better for people who are new here. And for those who've been there, there'll also be some questions that just take us back and things like that in the meantime my hair is quite dry so i want to use this to just um get it feeling a bit better and also um oil it um up because tomorrow i'm traveling and i just want to yeah that's that so let's uh have prepared a few questions that are going to get me through the video and yeah let's get right into it so my name is wendy as i have said um i started my youtube channel in 2017 um i started with motherhood content at the time i was a new mom i was doing it with my friend wendy some of you do know this most of you know this um yeah and we just started doing motherhood content because there are no young moms doing it and it did well it did well at the time and god was good to us so yeah so shortly after life moved on i moved places um when and i physically grew apart like not not as friends but like she stayed far i stayed far and then we had to separate in terms of YouTube. Like, it couldn't work. Um, yeah, and then she has her own channel. Please go check her out. Oh, she's it's called Life with Wendy Mother. I hope I'll remember to put a link down below. Uh, you can just check her out. She's doing amazing, amazing content. Um, yeah, and so for me, I went into law school. I picked up a few hobbies in the meantime. And a few years, actually not. It's actually seven years later. It's almost seven. It's going to be seven like in November. So seven years later, we are here. And it's quite fascinating. So how has my life changed since I started my YouTube channel? I don't know. Um, In the beginning, it was just there was so much um flow of content and ideas. Like there's so much to say, so much to like talk about. That's what we did. And then when we transitioned into solo channels, our kids had grown so much. So... And then I started having a lot of self-doubt in my motherhood. I was just like, I don't even think I'm that great of a mom. I shouldn't be out there advising people on how to be moms. Because even me, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Like, I felt like at, at a certain point, I started getting anxiety. Because I'm like, what am I saying? It doesn't make sense what I'm saying. So that's how it was. Um, but the beauty of YouTube, like how my life has changed since, is... Till today, when I go out, there are people who recognize me for the things we did then. And also, it wasn't in... Like, even right now, if my as, as much as my YouTube channel is not where it was at the time, there's so many young girls or ladies who just come up and say, you know, I used to watch your channel a lot because I was a new mom. I was young, and you guys really gave me the strength to keep on going because it was like, I'm not alone. There are so many other girls doing this. So yeah, that was a beautiful thing. What inspired me to start my youtube channel i think i said this it's there was no young moms that's how we started some of the biggest challenges i face as a young mother i don't know if i'm still a young mom <laughs> i'm almost 30 now but like as a young mother i think a lot of self-doubt and a lot of 
people feeling like you don't know what you're doing because you're young um and that's making you feel like you don't really know what you're doing because you're young started talking about it started fixing my hair but yeah so there was that bit of um doubt where it's like probably don't know what i'm doing because i'm young but i'm here to tell you imagine you've got it you've got it for some reason the fact that you're trying is enough as a mom you're trying good job i have a call well so as i was saying as i was saying it's i love how cooling this thing is it's so cooling like what it's so good i love how it feels on my head but yeah so oh very wonderful <laughs> It's so nice, guys. It's so wonderful. But yeah, so there are a lot of challenges. And I think there's a lot of, you could say motherhood challenges, ideally. But um, also ch juggling school and being a mom was hard. Um, I ended up being a single parent. So not being in a kind of, what should I call it? I don't know how to call it, but like, not being in a relationship with my child's father it was a challenge per se but like there's a lot of judgment with single moms i didn't know that until like way later and then i was like wait for real come back to see jokes come for real for real people think about us like this and then there's also um oh, that one that one hits hit me hard at some point that one for realizing how people just don't like single moms just because and blame you for the single parent journey or whatever it's just quite quite the fascination for me um another challenge was finances finances was so big and i think till today and also just the idea of your friends are probably progressing in their careers and life and you're not um that hit me hard like for the past maybe few years because now is when i feel the differences at the time oh, we're all in school we're all doing this and it was okay people are doing their entry level jobs but then now you're doing i'm doing entry level work while my friends are like getting into senior positions they're becoming managers um so there's a lot of that so comparison at some point but i don't hate my life honestly i love it i see right now i'm working on seeing the things where i've progressed like that the parts of life i've progressed in more than my friends so there's that like life catches up or for some reason but yeah anyway like don't don't compare yourself <laughs> just don't do that i did that it wasn't fun um how do you balance motherhood with your other passions and career so i don't know there's no balance i don't balance it i just do what makes me happy in the time that it does like i just prioritize what's most important right now so for example tomorrow i'm supposed to be cycling to embo that was my plan from like january last year i planned that this weekend we're going to embo however um recently my child's school has this event not event um parents have to go and check results and everything and since i'm the one who's living with her and everything i do that so I have to cancel the trip. Oh, I'm not canceling the trip. I'm going to go, but I'm just going to drive. I won't be cycling, but I'm going to drive there. And I'm going to drive later. So they're leaving Nairobi at 6 a.m. I'm leaving Nairobi at like 10, 11 a.m. But in my car. Um, what's the most rewarding part of being a mom? Let me tell you, the hugs and the kisses and the cuddles. <laughs> my child has grown so much. It's so beautiful to see like... <sighs> It's so wonderful, honestly. And then seeing her grow into like a little young girl, being sassy, all the talents she has, and me trying to just do my best to nurture them. That is so rewarding for me. And I'm just like, you girl. You've done well. Maka smart. Thank you. Unanda? Okay. Yeah. Hey. Nice. Hey. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. That was my mom. Um, how has your approach to parenting 
changed over the years. In the beginning, I thought you just have, like, parents have it all. And let me tell you now, I grieve so much. I give so much grace to my parents. And I feel like my relationship with my parents has been fixed to some extent because of me being a mom. Like, I realized later that they are just trying their best. Like, literally, they're doing their best. There's no manual to this thing. There's no way to discipline your kids. There's no perfect way. Like, nothing is perfect. And every child is different from the other. So those things, when I realized that, I was just like, you know what? Mom and dad, I give you grace. You guys did amazing. And I'm so happy that you guys parented me the way you did. Because this was what you knew best. And that's what you did. So I also realized you only just try to become a pro max version of your parents. Like, that's what I always tell my friends. Like, what your parents did for you. Because that's your experience of what parenting looked like. And then you look at how your friends are parented and then you pick what you thought was great and then you move forward with it. You literally just try to become a pro max version of the people that parented you. If it's your grandparents, if it's your aunties, your community, whoever was a parent to you, you look at them and you just try to do better. So you live and realize sometimes you focus on the things you thought they didn't um, give attention to. It's, it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting because... I'll give an example. I think for me, co-curricular activities weren't emphasized um, much and they weren't really supported. Not that my parents are against it, but it was like education first. With my child, it's like education is good, like do well in school, but I'm also keen on seeing what other curricular activities you're taking part in. So I try my best to have her do a piano class. She's doing a, vi a violin class. I want to get her into sports. I'm thinking of either getting her into cycling or swimming or both. Cycling would be so difficult because I'm a cyclist. But like swimming, so it's it's a lot around that. So you try, you realize sometimes you try to parent around the things you felt were neglected for you. That's quite interesting, right? Any tips for new mothers and parents out there? Imagine you've got it. <laughs> like there's no, I don't think there's the best advice. It's like you've got this. If God trusted you with this child, he will equip you with everything you need to raise this child. Just um, trust your instincts. Really trust your instincts. Because, oh, you oh may got, oh may got, I promise, oh may got. And yeah, even us, we're all just trying. So no one is like doing it so well. And if you have friends who think are really killing it at parenthood, good for you. Learn from them, take it from them. Yeah. But there's no manual to this thing. Um, what inspired you to pick up cycling? And how it has impacted my life. So I picked up cycling in 2021 as a hobby. And it was quite... Oh, I'm feeling so good when I do this. And it was quite the... Like when I picked it up, my friend Kendi was moving from Nairobi. Mm, she had gotten a job out of Nairobi. And I used to hang out with Kendi in this season so much. So I used to go out a lot. Like out, turn ups, weekends. We used to go out a lot. So, Kendi moved out of town and I was like, so, what am I going to do? And I also realized Sherehe is not really my thing. Like, not every day. I can't do it every other weekend. So, I wanted to find something in Nairobi that I could do that didn't necessarily... Um, how can I put it? It didn't necessarily, like, take up too much of... No, no, that's not it. It didn't necessarily mean being in the club party so i wanted something fun I wanted something new and fitness would be amazing and i thought something cheap something that would kill my bank account i was wrong so i picked up cycling because i saw one of my friends called collins i guess i am um, cycling with this group called spinkings at the time spinkings they're not there anymore but they nurtured me into cycling and i really appreciate that um my thing is not for me this thing is not for me. I wanted to like, it's not for me. Ah, I'll go get my mom's. But yes, so um, I picked it up. I started as a beginner. The first ride was the 30 kilometer ride and I almost died. And then I decided to, to do it. Yeah, I decided to just be consistent. I joined a group called Mama Cycling. Um, they used to cycle Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I had three days of cycling, and that's how I just got hooked onto cycling. Um, towards the end of 2021, I started doing... I did Nairobi to Namanga, and I was so... Like, the feeling I felt that time was like... 
I am so strong and it's not strong the way women have always been depicted as strong because of what you've gone through but it's strong like physically I am so strong and I really loved that feeling how has it impacted my life I barely drink anymore if I do drink I can't drink um before I um arrive like tomorrow I'm cycling I can't drink I can't party tonight I have to prepare for the ride so I ended up a lot of my I made up I made friends who are in fitness um it's gotten me into interest in climate action um I care so much about um you know things like that and fitness and wellness for women particularly I really want women to just speak up hobbies just because I started like I'm like guys I wish you guys knew what this does for us um that's how I feel and so it's it's changed a lot a lot for me and even in my motherhood I'm just like I feel like I'm such a better mom right now I don't know if it's true but I think I am like I'm more cool and everything but like yeah my daughter gets a very strong mom I'm very I can conquer so much and I feel like even my mental strength is so much more. Can I share my journey through law school and what motivated me to do? Hmm. So before I was doing law school, I was doing Hmm. I also drink a lot more water now. I was cycling. Um law school. Hmm. So law school is quite interesting. Um, I did, I picked up, I went into law school in 2019 and this was, um, what it, I've always wanted to be a lawyer since I was a child. I did get enough grades for law school, but not regular as a parallel student. And at the time I was like, no, 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 no. So I was pushed to do something else. I didn't really enjoy it. So when I was going back to school, I said, I need to do something I'm enjoying so that I can be able to tell my child to do things for herself so that's why so i started law school in the beginning it was great i was thriving at it um and then covid hit and then we had to do online and online was so difficult for me as a mom some of my exams i was sitting for them when my with my daughter on my laps so it was extremely challenging taking doing the classes with my daughter on my lap and things like it was so difficult like my second and third year i didn't do well in my third year because it was just I think this was the year where Dina was having trouble sleeping. I still had to attend classes. It was extremely difficult for me. This I think it was 2021 Ukochini Chini when I was doing my third year. Or 2022. Yeah, actually it was 2022. Yeah, 2020. Yeah, that time. It was quite the challenge for me. Um, but I made it through. I finished. I'm hoping to graduate this year. So yay, guys. I did it. Um so I'm planning to train for a triathlon. So what inspired me? Um, it's just that strength that I've seen myself have when I've been consistent in cycling. I'm like, okay, maybe I can push harder. Basically, that's it. I want to try and do a triathlon. Um, my training is not yet um, in sync. I've been trying to get to learn how to swim better because I didn't start swimming as a child. I only started swimming as, as an adult. And it's literally self-teaching. YouTube and Instagram and just going down and trying my best. That's it. How do I stay motivated uh, with so many activities? So I don't and how I manage my time. Hmm. I don't know how I stay motivated. There's been a season of my life. I haven't been motivated. Let me put it like that. Um, the past year or so, I haven't really been motivated. I've just been moving with the flow. Um, but like the past two months, I've really been doing my best. Just to show it, trying my best to show up um right now i'm trying to be motivated right now as we speak my biggest motivation is i can do better for myself so i get up and do it not because of anything but because i have to so i promised myself so i'm doing it so literally right now it's like i want to do good for myself and so that when diana looks at me she's like you know my mommy is really she pushes it's not easy but she pushes so that's what keeps me motivated how i manage my time is literally schedule there are times i know i just try to my best to schedule i'm struggling with doing solo rides but i'm going to work that in but yeah scheduling is everything for me um my daily routine how does it look like oh this is embarrassing i don't think it's that <laughs> 
I don't think it's that motivational to be like, oh my God, so I have this daily routine. I wake up at six. Some days I wake up at 4 a.m. and I'm able to do my morning devotion. Some days, like today, I wake up at 6.40 and 6.30 and I have the first priorities to make sure the kids are ready for school. And that's just it. I don't have something solid yet. But can I say maybe my ideal morning routine? So my ideal morning routine and the woman I want to be, her morning routine looks like in the morning, like waking up at 4.30, doing her devotions till 5.30, um, picking a book to read, um, or having a quick workout indoor. Um, if I could go for a run, I would love to. I would love to, but I can't go for a run. So the days where I, I need to do a run, I'll be doing them after I drop the kids to school. This is like at 7.45 in the morning, maybe do a run for an hour, come back home, shower, breakfast. Um, I need to eat also before I run or work out. So there's that. Um, a lot of reading in the morning and research and a lot of work in the morning responding to emails from around 9 a.m things like that um doing work till midday and then go for a swim have lunch go for a swim vice versa whichever works best and uh, do a lot of um my errands and then in the evening wait they said morning or oh, daily and then in the evening, my focus will be on the children. When they come home, we do homework. If I'm able to get them on their bikes, we do something. We play a game or something. I want to take them off their computers and their phones and their tablets. It's too much. I don't like it. Um. Yeah, basically, that's that. I want to do two workouts a day in the morning and in the afternoon or in the evening, depending on what it is. Um. My favorite is cycling routes or training sports. If I say this, am I putting myself at risk? I don't know. I don't know if it's... Um, let me just say it. I love cycling on the bypass. The southern bypass makes me very, very happy. I could do the whole stretch. Ole Sereni to Kikuyu and back. Um, sometimes there's security issues. That's why I was like, hmm, am I putting myself on the spot? So there's that. But I really enjoy the bypass. I feel like the bypass raised me as a cyclist. So I really enjoy that. It's not difficult also. It's doable. It has two tough climbs, but they're workable. Um, can I share some fitness tips for business moms? I, for busy moms? <laughs> business moms. For busy moms. Um, I think busy moms, I would say, just prioritize yourself on days where you can um schedule everything you know when you the kids need you when work needs you and then find time in the gaps to do something i've seen my friends go for an hour swim during their lunch break that's how dedicated people in fitness are so please do something to keep your body moving do that walk in the evening do a run start with a walk it'll it become a run just do something for your fitness. Um, what's my nutrition plan? I don't know anything about nutrition when it comes to fitness. There's very little I can say on the same because I have very little information. Um, my legal career, how has it been so far? And what are my future plans? Ooh, so let's talk about it. I've just finished. I'm literally applying for internship. So I'm on entry level and I'm scared. But yeah, my future plans in the field, I do not think I want to, I don't say no, never say never, but I don't think I particularly want to practice, um, to go into litigation. Um, probably interested in, I don't know if I want to say this. Let's not say that. I don't want to say what I'm interested in yet. Maybe so I, I don't jinx it. Um, do I have any upcoming projects or goals for my YouTube channel? Oh, yes. I want to put in as much effort as I can on my YouTube channel. I want you guys to see me doing the tours. I want to focus a lot on the fitness bit, a bit of motherhood, and a lot of travel. Because I travel on my bicycle a lot. And I want to bring that to you guys. Um, my long-term goals, I don't think I'm... Long-term goals, both personal and professional. I don't think I want to talk about that. I don't think so. How do I see my channel evolving into the future? I think of my channel as one of those channels where 
moms will go to and be like, if this girl has done it, I can do it. Um, I also want it, I want to be thought of as this woman who brought, I feel like I have this grand ideas. And when you guys see them, see me leaving them, you'd be like, we've seen this girl from, we've seen her from ground up. And I do believe that I can. I do believe that I will. And I know what it's going to take for me to get there. And I'm not going to compromise on the scene. So, yeah. Um, I think, I don't know if I'll be able to do YouTube forever. Or rather, if it's in my plans. But I don't think of a time where I'll stop creating. I have I need a creative outlet. And I think YouTube is one of the amazing platforms for the scene. What are some of the interactions I've had with my inter with my subscribers? Let me tell you. Oh my god. Oh my god. So I did my judicial attachment in Malindi. Um, when I was there, I did it. It was two months, and then I had my daughter for the second month. Let me tell you, I was in. I was. We were do. We were going to Marafa Hills Kitchen. If you've never been there, you should go. We we're going with my friends to Marafa Hills Kitchen. And then we stopped. I don't know if it was when we were going or coming back. We stopped at a petrol station to buy some stuff. So I decided to buy snacks for my child. So we were adults and then my daughter. So when we were doing that, the attendant at the petrol station was like, Oh, Wendy, how are you? So I was like, I'm good. She's like, Oh my God, Dana has grown so much. I'm like, Oh yeah. And then she's like, Oh, I'm sorry. My name is so and so. I don't even remember her name. She's like, I know you from your YouTube channel. At this point, I hadn't posted in like a year. I was like, what? This was crazy. And even sometimes, like, when I... There's a time I was in the club, and then... I was in the washroom, and this girl was like, Oh my God, Wendy, I know you from YouTube. I was like, girl. <laughs> so, that was quite interesting. The, the Malindi one really caught my attention, and I was like, wow, that was very wonderful. What advice would I give someone starting a YouTube channel? Imagine just do it. That's it. Do it. How do I handle negative comments or criticism? I barely had had I barely had to handle such, but I just ignore or I remove your comments. That's, that's how I protect my space. Even like with friendships and things, if it no longer serves me, I just remove and just focus on what works. Um, what topics and what types of content do I enjoy creating the most? I think the cycling content for me is just a wow. It really makes me happy. Uh, motherhood as well just really gets me excited because of how far Jaina has come. Now it does. At some point, I didn't enjoy doing motherhood content and travel. Oh my God, I want to show you the places I've gone. That's not like a crazy. It's just like I haven't traveled out of the country. I've only gone to Tanzania. So it's just this. I'm enjoying that so much. Um, I'd love to take you more. I've done a video on Nairobi to Nyeri. I've done... Like, Nyeri was so beautiful. We were invited and I loved it. Um, I've done Gilgil. I don't know which other ones I've done, but I have so many videos on my phone. I plan to edit and put it out there for you guys to see. Um, do I have any hobbies and interests that I haven't shared? Um, I don't know. I can sew. <laughs> you can see that I can sew. Um, I can bake cakes. Those are things I picked up um, on the go. What else? I don't know. There's just what else i can create some art pieces i think i enjoy i did pottery once and i'd want to do it again i'd enjoy painting i literally just want a creative outlet that i'm not particularly trying to create a career out of yeah that part um what are some of the fun facts you guys may not know about me i don't know i feel like i'm very open and things like that so if you have any questions, I might, I would love to answer that. I don't think, I don't, I can't think of something right now. Um, what's a day in my life like outside of YouTube and training? I don't know. It's, I can bum, I can watch. I love Netflix. Right now I'm watching the ultimate I say on Bridgerton. <laughs> Let's talk about Kanye. What's going on there? I am getting so triggered. Oh my God. I don't know. Right now, that's what I'm watching. And my next question is, what are my favorite books, movies, or TV shows? My favorite book of all time, I think, um, is Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell. <laughs> yeah, that one. I'm reading this right now. I've read it for, like, a really long time. It's quite exciting, honestly, as a book. It's just that 
I just haven't been reading it. But if I read it well, two days, two more days, I'm done with it. Um, that's what I'm reading now. I particularly enjoy a lot of um, African literature in fiction and romance. It's quite beautiful for me. Um, yeah, basically, those are kind of books I gravitate towards. And I'm trying to read a lot of self-help books because I'm trying to improve the quality of my life. Um, TV shows, we've talked about it. I'm enjoying The Ultimatum. You see, I don't love um, reality TV, but that one I had to watch because of all the reviews people had of Kanya. So I was like, let me see for myself because I don't like bullies. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm watching right now. Looking back, what advice would I give to my younger self? Hmm. I think I would tell myself to keep moving. Um, when you just keep moving, it will be hard, but you, you've got it in you to keep moving. Um, feel the fear and do it anyway as well. You guys know, I even have t-shirts printed on the same. Literally feel the fear and do it anyway because Fear is normal. I literally just told Diana today. She was telling me how they're doing modeling in school with newspaper dresses. And she was like, I was so scared the first time. And I told her, Mommy, it's okay to be scared. Just feel it and then do it when you're scared. So do it scared for me is, is big. Um, what's one thing you wish I knew before becoming a mom? So before becoming a mom, I wish I knew that no matter what happens, these kids grow. <laughs> so just do your best in whatever seasons don't beat yourself up too much sometimes it, you will sometimes you won't be the best mom and it's okay but as much as you're putting in whenever you put in the work i promise you i promise you you're doing well um before becoming a student is being a student or mom it's gonna be difficult but i think you've got it in you just do hard things i think that things i didn't do in school because I was so tired and I feel like maybe I could do better. Maybe it's also me beating myself up too much. But yes, when you can do hard things and you can do really well and it's okay. Um, being, being an athlete, I don't know if I can call myself an athlete, but like, um, I don't think there's any advice I'd have before becoming an athlete. Everything I've learned has been with good timing. So right now I'm just trying to get into competitive, the competitive bit of it, not for anything. I'm enjoying the medals I'm getting, but just to see how far I can push my body. That's actually where I want to get into it. With others, it's like, I'm just so relaxed, I'm easy, and I'm just pacing myself. So I just want to see how hard I can push my body. I believe that's it. So I've talked about YouTube, I've talked about, like my content creation, I've talked about being a mom talked about law school i've talked about um cycling and things like that i don't know if you have any other questions for me if you want to get to know me better please ask, ask them down here i'll be able to answer as for me i think i am done i need to oil my hair now and yeah focus on tomorrow i have a, quite an interesting day tomorrow so thank you so much for tuning in don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't um remember to feel the fear and do it. Bye.